Oh, we're good. Hola y bienvenidos a nuestra sesión uh, de Hyperstream o Hyperstream. I'm going to dip in and out between Spanish. I'm John O from Zenic and we have a very special guest today. Hola. Stephen, by popular demand, is here for the Spanish AQA GCSE Paper 1 and Paper 3 um, night before the exam Hyperstream. How is everyone doing? Thank you for joining. Um, I'm very, tengo muchas ganas, I'm very excited. Um, because Senor Giorno is the master. El maestro, por favor. El maestro. El maestro, sí. I didn't yes. know that was a word. Well, it is, now you do. See, we're learning something already. So we're learning with Senor Giorno Through. today. Um, me llamo Esteban en español, or Steven in Spanish. Sí. Y but Giorno, Giorno is the master. Giorno I don't Juan. Wanna Juano. Wow. Juano. 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 I like it. Okay, we've already got requests for the gong. The gong is coming in the next video. Don't worry, Stephen. I can go and get the gong. Actually, should we go and get the gong? Do you want us to get the gong? Um, okay, people want, want, want the gong. People Just want the gong. gong. We'll go get, get the gong. gong. Um, and the physics is at five thirty, so make sure you stick around for that. While Stephen gets the gong, I'm going to talk through what we're going to be going over today. Obviously, it's the reading and the listening tomorrow. Um, so, <laughs> so reading and the listening tomorrow. So we're going to go over some tips for the reading and the listening exam. Okay. Um, and every time you get an answer right, you know that the gong is going to be hit. It's going to be wild. Uh, I'm so impressed that so many of you are here. Thank you for joining. Get, uh, get us to join. We want this to be as interactive and fun as um, possible. Um, and remember to stick around for the physics at 5.30. Gong is coming, Anna, don't worry. Um, so we're gonna go over some reading and listening tips, and then we're gonna go over some requested topics. So I'll be going over some environmental, um, el medio ambiente, because that was requested a lot, and we're gonna go over a translation, how to structure it and break it down. Um, and we'll go over a few, um, we'll go over some common terminology that comes up. We're gonna go over some false friends to watch out for in the exam tomorrow. Um, that's gonna be very important. Um, so yeah, I just like, oh my god, okay, that scared me a little bit. Look, okay, as promised, we have the gong. Um, this was a really good investment for the company, gong. the gong. It's a good Five one. pound. Fiver. Like Fiver on Amazon. See, Get yourself boom, a gong. Boom, you're all welcome. So, um... John who equals Pete Gong, much appreciated. Oh my god, loving that. Thank you, whoever shouted that out. So, Stephen, estas listo? Sí, 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 claro. Sí, vale, pero... Vamos. Va, vamos, para empezar, vamos a decir unos puntos para recordar en el examen mañana. So to start, we are going to go over a few points that will be helpful to remember in the exam tomorrow. Hutchinson Gaming wants el medio ambiente. Sí, el medio ambiente es... We love the environment. We love the environment. Y tiene suerte porque más tarde voy a hablar del medio ambiente y, y uno... Y un, poco de vocabulario que necesitas saber para mañana. Puede hablar el español, sí. Sí, sí pues, claro, claro, por supuesto. La biblioteca. <laughs> Stephen is loving this, adoring it, adoring it. Okay, so um, we're going to start with some tips for the reading paper, and this will be tips for higher and for foundation. And I agree, the chat has lovely vibes. Vibes, you guys are being really good. Um, less stress is best. Sí, good knowledge. Sí. Por supuesto. So for the reading paper, things to look out for. Make sure you look out for negatives, especially when short words can change the whole sentence. Just one word can change the sentence. No hablo, no compro, sí. no compro nada, I don't buy anything. Exactly. Look out for the no's, look out for the nada's. That's going to catch um, you out. Now. Are we doing higher or foundation? This is a this is applicable for higher and foundation. Yeah, right yeah, now. both. So it's both at the moment, and we'll do a little bit of foundation and a little bit of higher. The translation will be more higher tier, but the vocabulary will come up in foundation. So, boom, you're welcome. All bases covered. So, vamos. Vamos. So another thing, um, while we're on the topic of negatives, no, you need to look out for double negatives. So, no es malo is, it's, it isn't bad, so it's good. Right? It's good knowledge. Aha, uh -huh. see, it's good knowledge. It is good knowledge. Or knowledge. No, see, very good. Very wow. good. Wait, Stephen is killing this. This is his first live stream. Can we have a gong for Stephen? Boom. We love the gong. Love the gong. He love the gong. And put your question. Do you want to see him back? Let us know. Okay, that's a yes. Now, 
we're going to talk about some uh, false friends next, okay? Now, these come up a lot, and they're ones you want to look out for in the exam. So something I always used to mix up was una libreria y una biblioteca. Stephen, do you know the difference? Biblioteca is library. Very good. Libreria is bookstore. Amazing. I'm Amazing. reading that. No, don't give the game what? away. Don't give the game away. It's just in our head. We know it. We already knew that. We though. already knew that. Like, Stephen Dance. Yeah, Ooh. we have some requests. Ooh. Dance. Do a little like. Let's save that for another live stream. Okay, no. Okay, no. Un poquito de bailar. We've got business coming up. Okay, Tune in that, for business oh tomorrow. Oh my god, business live stream and tomorrow. And you probably won't see me dance. I tell you, if we get up to a hundred, you people, might. If we get up to a hundred people watching, we'll make Stephen dance. So that's the promise. You're welcome. We're at 61, come on, let's go. Okay, next we're gonna go over constipado, which is not as bad as it sounds. It's not. It's not. That just means you've got a cute little cold. So you're like, a chew, little sneeze. Is tengo gripe French tengo gri or Spanish? Gripe is also um, Spanish, good point. And gripe is a flu. So gripe, flu. Similar to constipado. Similar, similar to a cold, but not but quite different. the same. What's gong in Spanish? I have no idea. I don't know. If someone could find out what gong is in Spanish and post we it. We want to know. We want to know. We're excited. Um, okay, another one was es embarazada. What does embarazada mean, Stephen? Pregnant. Boom, not embarrassed. embarrassed. Very good. A lot of people think it means embarrassed. But when to say you're embarrassed in Spanish, do you know what you say? No. Que vergüenza. Good knowledge. See, what can I say? And you should, you should have some vergüenza yourself. And how do you say, I am not pregnant? No estoy embarazada. Embarazado if I'm a man. Well, men can't be pregnant, really. That's true. So it's always embarazada. Boom. Okay. So does anyone know the difference between recordar y grabar? Very common um, false friend that people mix up. No one in the chat does. No one Elgong. El Gong. El Gong. El Gong. It's El Gong. Amazing. It's just okay. El Gong. That's it. the best word ever. Perfect. El Gong. El Gong is back. If you want the El Gong to be hit, can you tell me the difference between recordar y grabar? Anybody? We'll hit the gong anyway. We'll hit the gong anyway because it's so popular demand. So recordar is to remember. So rem can record I hit the gong? You can hit. Of course you can. Bam! El Gong. Anna is loving the gong. I'm freaking loving this. So recordar is to remember, whereas grabar is to record. So recordar does not mean to record, okay? Now, another one to remember is introducir. What does introducir mean, Stephen? To insert. Yes, so that's when you're inserting an object like a CD into a CD player or something like that. It doesn't mean to introduce someone. If we introduce something or introduce someone, do you know what the verb that we use? Anybody? Oh my God, tomorrow, tomorrow, hey. Um, we use... <laughs> We use presentar. Presentar is how we introduce um, a person. So that's how, what we would say. So Easy. We are presentando, Stephen. We're presentanding to, me. Boom, obviously. the world of life. I'm stream. not sure that's Spanish, presentanding. Presentando, well, presentando is the gerund, so yeah, yeah. it kind of works. You just need to not say the ing in your exam. Exactly. You say ando. Ando. Or yendo. Or yendo, see, sí, very good. Someone, Someone's doing the GCSE Spanish Seneca course. I'm 13. 13th in GCSE Spanish. Oh my god, 13th. Knowledgeable xylophones all over me, but... How are you going to push yourself into the top 10? I don't think I can. I think if you watch this live stream, maybe you will be in the top yeah, 10. Yeah, I'm watching this live stream. You're going to watch it back. Very it's meta. going to be great. I don't know, it's like Inception. Okay, so next we're going to talk over some tips for the listening paper. Shout any questions that you've got um, in the... Um, that you've got yeah, yeah, go. Do it, do it. We're ready. We're here. We're focused. What questions do you want? Preguntas. Preguntas. And what topics do you want? We've got Medio Ambiente coming up and some stuff on families and relationships. Let us know any other topics. Um, for the listening paper, some quick tips. Um, you get five minutes of reading time in the reading paper, so make sure you use that time really wisely. Pay particularly to, to questions that you think you might know how to answer and so you have an idea of what to look for. And you get to listen to the, um, the recording twice. So don't assume you have the answer right the first time. Listen and double check the second time it's played because you might have missed something. See, important. Now is not the time to be sloppy. That's what we don't want. Um, and also like, don't be afraid to use your initiative in the exam, right, Stephen? Yeah, yeah. It's, or in riff. Life. Riff, riff, what I is it? Know. I love it, I love Panic. it. It was great. Panic. Like, panic. Panic Las Fiestas. We like Las Fiestas. We, we love Las Nos Fiestas. We love Las Fiestas. 
But uh, if you don't understand it, think about the type of answer that would make sense, right? If they're in a restaurant and you order something, and they order like a cake and they ask yeah. for an aside. It's una cuchara will be the answer if you're in a restaurant. Exactly. And una cuchara, grab a spoon. Good knowledge. Yeah. What's a fork? Un for, for tenedor. Tened un tenedor, si. Sí. Pienso que. Pienso que. Pienso, un tenedor. Is, what's a fork, guys? Can you let us know? Um, it's got to be el tenedor. El tenedor, si. Sí. Yeah. Creo que. Um, so that's a, that's a little tip. Make have it what you think would work in the context of the question. Now, of course, as in any exam, you're not going to leave anything blank. Stephen, would you leave anything no, blank? No, 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 absolutely not. Jono would kill me. I would be so mad. Senor Jono Senor would be Jono, very cross. No, estoy muy contento. Tenedor. Tenedor. Si, sí, tenedor. Tenedor. That is a gong. That's a gong. That's a gong. Christ, it's so loud. The gong is loud. The gong is loud. And we're going to, we're going to be irritating a lot of people. Um, but thanks all for shouting in about El Tenedor. El, El Forco. I would, I mean, I wish it was El Forco. But so remember, don't leave any answers blank, especially in the listening paper, because you can um, just have a guess. Have a guess, because most of the time it's just. If it's like, blank, you get nothing. Exactly. And most of the time it's just a letter. And if you um, guess, you probably get nothing, but you might exactly. get something. And another good point if you change your mind about an answer, make sure the old one is crossed out. Um, Do you, you want to explain the gerund? The ger oh, the gerund. Big request for the gerund Big request over there. For the gerund. Okay, okay, let's go. So the gerund is just a form of a verb. When you're when you're doing something, so in English it's an ing word. So Stephen's going to be going soon. Sorry. I'm talking. We, estoy yeah. hablando. I'm Very buying. Good. Estoy es comprando. Exactly. So in Spanish you'll see it with an ando if it's an ar verb or yendo if it's an ir verb, right? Sí. Sí. Por eso estamos gongiendo. Estamos gongiendo con el gong. El gong. I think we might have just es mágico. Es mágico. We might have just created a new Spanish verb. You're welcome. Gongiendo. Is gong a verb? That's the next question. That is a good question. To gong. To gong. Is it gongar? Gongar. Or is it gonger? Gong. I think it would be gongar. Gongier. Gong gong Let us know. What is it to gong? No sé. Um, any more questions about verbs or gerunds? Very good point. Thank you for everyone shouting out. They all end in ando and yendo. Um, so, gong yendo. See, we think it's gong yendo. Gong yendo. Right? I like gong yendo. I like gong yendo. E or I or. Exactly. I think that's the best one. Gong yendo, definitely. Gong yendo. And again, just some generic tips for the exam. Make sure you're writing in clear, legible writing. Um, look at the amount of marks available for a question, because if it's two marks, you're probably going to have to give two points. Definitely. Um, and the examiners are told to only mark the first two things you write down. So don't try and write down three things and hope that they'll pick the right two. They're only going to pick two, so um, knowledge. pick the right ones, okay? So those are some tips and tricks for the exam. Hope that was useful. We're going to go over some vocab and stuff like that from the night before course next. Um, You're so going to have to do that. Solo. S Soltero. Solo. Soltero. Solo. Steven, sadly, is, has to leave us. Because he's having too much fun, you can't take too much any fun. More. Too much fun. It's fifty minutes all that more. he can handle. Uh, but uh, buena suerte. Yeah, so, claps for Stephen. Thanks Go for joining. Gong for Stephen. Gong for Stephen. Gong for Stephen. He'll be back for the business hyper stream. So don't feel too sad. But right now we're going to get into some. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Gracias por venir. Now it's John is flying solo. And we're just going to go over some. Um, we're going over some vocab. Highly requested topic was the environment, so we're going to start with that. Now, we're going over a translation, and translations are something that can um, really scare a lot of students. But honestly, you don't need to. You just need to break it down, and it'll be like it'll be great. So, um, let me just share my screen with you guys so you can see what I'm chatting about. Um, and then we can get into some specifics about the environment, okay? So again, keep me up posted, keep me, let me know any questions you have about um, vocab or anything like that. Um, and we're gonna crack on with some, uh, let me just move that. We're gonna go over a translation about the environment, okay? So the translations always look kind of intimidating when you start, but just break it down, do it one sentence or do it one verb at a, one verb at a time. And use the verbs that you know to help um, guide your answer. Now in this example, we're gonna go to it sentence by sentence, and I'm gonna point out some false friends that come up a lot, but also some words that can help you, okay? Any questions so far? 
Um, uh, we're still, why are we talking about maths? Um, creo que, I believe that. Very good. Thank you, Cameron. Boom. So that is how we're going to be starting. Creo que, that is, um, that is how we start. So um, I think the traffic, I, th I think that the traffic es un problema grand es un problema grave porque so problema this is a good thing to look out for problema is masculine so it's un problema not una problema um, is a very uh, serious problem so or uh, is a very serious or, yeah is a serious problem because so it's a very serious problem because so porque because Años tras año, that means year after year. That's a good phrase to remember for your exam. If you don't know that one, I would write that down on a cute little piece of paper. So, año tras año, year after year. Hay más autos en circulación. So, what does that mean? There are more cars on the road. So, en circulación means on the road. Okay, next we're going to the second sentence. So, los coches son las que más producen. So, the cars are... are uh, the cars produce the most emission, las emisiones de emissions of dióxido de carbono. You should know what that is: carbon dioxide. Very good. That um, and uno de los. So that is uno is one of the. So one of the gases de efecto invernadero. Now this is a very important a medio ambiente keyword to know. Gases de efecto invernadero is greenhouse gases, okay? So that is what's important. That's a really important one to remember. If you don't remember that, scribble that down on a last minute vocab list that you can read over now and take into that exam tomorrow. Okay, now we're going on to translate the third sentence. Sin embargo, comes up a lot. That means however. Good one to remember and also a good one to use um, if you, any of you are doing the writing exam, a good thing to use too. Muchos gobiernos, that's a lot of government. So muchos, a lot of, okay? Um, ya han introducido leyes. So leyes is a lot. Ya means already. And this is a good tense. This is the, per the past perfect tense. Han introducido, have introduced. So whenever you see ido um, in a verb, that is the same in English as ed, okay? So they have already introduced laws. Para reducir, to reduce. So when you have para and then the, this is the infinitive form of a verb. So ar, ir, er, when a verb ends like that, it's the infinitive. When you have para before that, it's to reduce or to whatever. So that's what that para does. La cantidad de coches. So the quantity of cars. Um, so again, that was the third, third sentence. All nice and done. How is everybody feeling? In order to reduce, you guys are freaking killing it on the live chat. Gone for you. I'm going to irritate so many people in this, um, like, in my surroundings. Um, but yes, la cantidad de coches, the, uh, the number of cars. I would say, um, as a little tip, instead of cantidad, say number of cars, because that's what you're more likely to say in English. La cantidad de coches, the number of cars on the road. Okay. So that was a quick run through of some of a translation and how to break it down sentence by sentence and try and break it down like even further into words and use those words to help you. Do you have any questions so far about um, um, environment or anything like that? Um, oh my God, thank you so much, Ash Ketchup. I hopefully won't get into trouble. Um, I will maybe do the gong less frequently or not as loud, but it won't get me into too much trouble. Um, Gongiendo is my favorite new gerund verb. Okay, so now we're gonna go, we've got some requests through on Insta to go over um, some families and friends vocab. And this is a good one because this is like, this comes up a lot, especially in, um, it can be really easy to confuse the words as well, especially in the listening portion, it comes up quite a lot. Um, to, and if you want to say to recycle is reciclar, that is to how we recycle. Um, which tense? Which tense do you want to know about? Um, let me know. I mentioned the um, the past perfect tense, which is just when you have like when you see like ido or ado is like a form of the verb. So uh, si he reciclado. Very good, Cara. So reciclar and then ado. That is I have recycled. Okay. Boat is un barco. Um, <laughs> uh, 
Um, like that. So how would you say, um, we have a, uh, but isn't your stepmother pregnant? So madrasta, not mudrasta, madrasta is um, the way you say stepmother. And once you remember stepmother, it's easy because to remember stepfather because it's going to just be padrasta. Padrasta. Okay. So su madrasta está embarazada de siete metros. So this is really good. False friend, embarazada. Remember, means pregnant, not embarrassed. Um, and su madrasta, how many madrastas? One, so están is plural, that is for they. So that word is wrong and it's got to be esta. And we say esta en because we use estar when we're talking about something that's not permanent. Um, so you're not pregnant forever. So that's why we don't use um, ser. So it's not es en it's estar en Awesome. Okay, Mary Kay and Ashley, nice little throwback. I'm feeling it. How do we say sister in Spanish? Let me check the chat. What's the word for sister? Let me know, let me know, and I'll do like a cute little gong. How do we say sister um, in Spanish? Amana, very good Molly, straight in there. I'm gonna do a very quiet little gong. Guys, you're killing it, very, very good. So Amana is how we say sister um, in Spanish. Now, a slightly harder word, how do we say twins? Does anyone know the word for twins in Spanish? Guys, killing with the amana, boom, boom, boom. All of you are doing awesome. How do we say twins? Do you know the way of saying twins? That's a little bit harder. Um, it's a bit of more of a higher tier vocab, but still good to know. Gemelos, very good, Lily. Now, because these are, um, because these are, Mary Kay and Ashley are female, it's gonna be gemelas. So always remember, um, the gender of the noun that we're describing. So mi hermana y yo están gemelas. Tengo el pelo largo y rubio, pero ella tiene el pelo corto y rubio. So nice little bit of vocab, let's translate that. My my sister and I are twins. Now, we just talked about the difference between ser and estar, which isn't super important for GCSE, but it's still important to know about. So if you are twins, you're always twins, so you've got to be somos gemelas. So we've got to use ser, and it's also we, so we're using somos. Pelo largo y rubio, y ella tiene el pelo corto y rubio. So that's long blonde hair and short blonde hair. Okay? So, Cremelos, good word to remember. Really, really good. You guys are killing it um, with the questions. Really, really good. Okay, so did we just become best friends? Whoever put the gifts together for this night before course was did a really stellar job. So how do we say best friends? We say mejores amigos. Very good. Okay, so it's my boyfriend's birthday. Um, es su cumpleaños. I wish it was my birthday. It's not for a few months, but it will be soon. Um, amigo. What's the word for boyfriend in Spanish? It's going to be novio. Novia is girlfriend. So you only, Spanish is great. You only need to remember one word and then you just change the last letter from like an A to an O. Boom. Okay, successful, intelligent, caring, graceful woman. So what did we, what are the, what are the um, adjectives used here? So first one is easy, intelligent, inteligente. And then caring, what would we use for caring? That's gonna be cariñosa. Okay, very good. Um, amiga is wrong, very good, very good. Yep, amiga was like inteligente, very good. Inteligente, cariñosa, you guys on the chat, absolutely nailing it. Okay, so next we are going on to talk about weddings. So how do you say someone's married? Who can let me know in the chat? Boda is wedding, very good, but how do you say um, they're married? What would you say? So boda is a wedding, really good ash, but how do you say, how do you say someone's married? Maridos, si, sí, maridos, you can't say. Can you, anyone think of a word beginning with a C? Casado, very good, very good, Rose, awesome. Bam, little gong, little gong, little gong. So that's how we say, uh, we say casados. Um, and then what is the word for a husband or a wife? Do we know that word? It's uh, casado, very good, very good, very good. How do you say someone's husband or wife? What's the Spanish for husband or wife? Let me know, let me know. Begins with an E, marido, you could say marido. Um, so mi hombre is a bit more, uh, um, esposo, very good. Cara straight in there, awesome, esposo. Esposo is what we say. 
So like in English, it's like the English spouse, okay? And then easy for wife is just esposa de flip. Very good. And we've had this come up before. You guys were on it. A wedding is una boda. Um, we have to put the una. Una boda is a wedding. Very, very good. And a marriage. Do we know the word for a marriage? Out of, which one is it out of these? Let me know. Which one do I need to pick? What's the word for a marriage? How do we say it? if a wedding is una boda? Una boda. What is a marriage? Boda's wedding out of the, yes, un matrimonio, very good. So un matrimonio, this is a tip. So when I would be looking at these, remember a marriage, that's a noun. So we know it can't be casarse because that's a verb, it's an AR verb. So un matrimonio is a marriage. Okay, time to party. Really, really good. Okay, so that was a quick run through of vocab. Um, what I'll do in the last few minutes is just recap what we've covered um, and then go through any last minute questions. So um, does anyone have any last minute questions that you would like me to have a go at answering really quickly? Um, I hope you're all feeling good for the exam tomorrow, not too stressed. Um, remember to just take some deep breaths, um, try and keep active. Um, talk to your friends, talk to your family. If you are stressed, it's good to talk about it. It's good not to um, like bottle these things up and it's okay to be stressed. It's okay to talk about it um because gcses are ex um are stressful so i'd say a quick thing for and remember to stick around if you have physics tomorrow we've got another live stream at um 5 30 so in 15 minutes i'll talk through some tenses really quickly um the key but we've got physics at 5 30 so stick around for that if you want um and we've got a special guest um the amazing Tom, he did he did physics at Oxford. He's super smart. He's going to be joining us for that. Um, if you want to talk about the tenses that you would need to remember um, for the GCSE exam, key ones you've got the preterite, which is for which is a type of past tense for describing like your holiday, like we are somewhere. Um, you've got the present tense, um, which is like right now in the moment. Future tense, e future tense is easy to recognize because it's the infinitive form of the verb. So it's going to be A-R, E-R, I-R, and then we'll have like a little bit extra on the end. Um, physics is at um, 5.30, so it's in 15 minutes. So it's at 5.30. Um, really good, you guys are on it, you guys are on it. You don't need me. Um, so I'd say those are the three main tenses to um, be able to look out for. You've got the conditional, which always ends in like an, an I with an accent and then an A. Um, good thing to look out for, um, and that the condition is something like I would, I could, I should, that kind of thing. Okay, um, and unfortunately, we're running out of time, so that was a very quick whistle stop. Next time, if you give me a little bit more, if you were shout, shout out tenses a bit closer to the beginning, then I'd have more time to go over them. And um, there's some really good uh, modules on Seneca, so check those out for going over the tenses if you need a last little review. Um, I'll see you guys in physics. Remember some tips for the exam tomorrow. Look out for those false friends we talked about. Um, make sure you use that reading time um, effectively in the listening exam. So you kind of guess what the passages are going to be about. Um, that's going to really help. And maybe star questions you're thinking are looking a little bit, little bit crazy. Um, break down translations one by one. Um, don't use anything blank. Write clearly. Um, those are all of the tips. Um, so thank you so much for joining. Um, I will see you in 15 minutes for GCSE Physics Paper 1 uh, revision with Tom. So bye, guys. Thanks very much for joining. Hasta luego y buena suerte para mañana.